Ever since the Colorado Avalanche went up to bat second overall in that 2011 NHL draft and right behind Nugent Hopkins, went with, I mean, it wasn't completely off the board, but it was a surprising pick at number two to go with Gabriel Landeskog from the Kitchener Rangers. I've been fascinated by the guy. And then after one season, when the kid was literally 19 years old, he gets a C slapped onto his chest. One of the youngest, I think it was the youngest captain in NHL history at the time. You can bet he got my attention when that happened. I'm like, okay, is this guy the new, young, fresh face of the franchise of the Colorado Avalanche after guys like Joe Sackick, Milan Hayduke, those types of guys started to make their way out. But then, yes, there were some years sprinkled in where the Avs were decent, but there were some years where the Avs were downright horrendous, like beer league level, almost awful, (laughs) including the year they got Nathan McKinnon and that 2016-17 season. Do not mention that to an Avalanche fan. They will literally start crying. But number 92 really grew into that captaincy role and Clearly, the guy who put the C on him when he was 19 saw something special in him and saw, hey, this guy is just oozes leadership. And clearly, they were right because, man, has he become one of the premier captains in the NHL. I talked about it a little while back. That a lot of people think that McKinnon is the captain and sometimes forget that Landeskog has the C. That was no slight on Landeskog. I wasn't saying McKinnon should be the captain. It's just that sometimes people say that, including on the air sometimes. I've heard some people slip up like that. But Landeskog, in his own right, is a fantastic captain and the leader of that team. Even guys like McKinnon have come out and said how amazing of a captain Landeskog is. So when the Avalanche come out and announce that Landeskog not only will miss the entire 2022-23 season, of course, but also the entire playoffs... That's absolutely devastating for a guy who was such a key part and key leader for that Avalanche team in their Stanley Cup run last season. Like, imagine how gutting that is for them to not have their main squeeze leader for another playoff run here. I mean, I know they've got McKinnon, McCarr, they've got leaders in that room who can take the stick and run with it, but still, this guy's your captain. Like, obviously, they're in love with this guy in the dressing room, and he does so much more than just what he does on the ice. And I quote tweeted this on Twitter, like, this is just devastating for him as well. I mean, I know you can't cry too hard for a guy who makes millions of dollars and has a Stanley Cup and all this stuff, but you also have to remember that this is a person who's devoted his life to pro hockey and to winning championships and it takes everything you have all of your soul emotional and physical to go for this thing and they want it like more than anything okay and just because he's got it once doesn't mean it's gone like he wants that chance to go for this thing again right and I know there's going to be people in the comments oh yeah he can wipe his tears with his dollar bills and stuff but still this is a guy who is at the peak of competition and wants this so bad and Ask anybody in pro sports who's won a championship. That window is small. It can leave in an instant. You can blink and all of a sudden you're in the basement of the NHL again. So when the window is open, you want to take advantage. So I feel for Landis Gog and... I mean, we know he's still going to be around the dressing room and with the guys, but still, it's just not the same. It's similar to the Sean Monaghan thing with the Flames. I just feel for these guys when they miss this amount of time, especially a captain like Landis Gog. I'm happy he's got his cup, but man, I wish he was there with them. It's devastating for him. Let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. As usual, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.